Yep. Okay. So um, some optics pieces. These are the uh, the one inch holders for uh, for lenses, and uh, it says SMR one. These are one inch for for lenses. These are one inch holders for uh, for mirrors. Uh, what you do here, you put the mirror right here. These are the two little screws, uh, and that they they kind of uh, just act as anchors. And if you loosen this one here, you put the mirror in, and then you uh, you tighten it up. So let's let's just set it here. I'll pull out the mirror and put it in. These are front side mirrors, which means you're not supposed to touch them, and it's very hard to clean if you really put the put put your finger print on it. So mm, just kind of put it here with the two screws uh, holding two different ends and you can tighten, oh, I think I didn't do it so well. Okay, you can tighten the third point. Oh, you know what, this one's not doing so well. Okay, I got it. All right, third time the charm. So now it's, uh, it's secured and uh, compared to this one, which is, uh, you can also put mirror in it. Uh, this actually has a couple of degrees of freedom. You flip to the back, these two screws are actually pushing against uh, the front plate. So if you turn this in forward, the front plate gets pushed forward. It, it tilted. It's tilted uh, a little bit. So if you if you pull this back, it's actually untilting. So if you just look at this one, this screw right here, it's pushing against a corner, right? If you if you push against a corner too much, it starts to tilt. So there's a two degrees of freedom for tilt for this uh, this little mount. So it's a, uh, so it's a, it's a tilt mirror mount. Typically, mirrors will actually have to require some sort of tilting uh, to align the, uh, the reflective beam. So that's a kind of nice thing here. So let's just loosen this a little bit. I can't really open it. Okay, so we have an iris that uh, opens and closes. You can, you can tighten it down if you want. Um, this one is a little diffuser, just a piece of uh, plastic. It's not really uh, clear. And uh, the, the purpose of this is, if you have laser hitting on this, it'll become a, instead of a, a laser beam, it becomes a point light. So it'll actually scatter in all different directions, just like a point light source. But laser is not, right? Laser only points in one direction, doesn't really illuminate in all different directions. This will turn the laser into something like a light bulb. So there you'll have a, an object, and you can, you can make it into an image through a system. So it's, that's what this, uh, this is for. It's a little diffuser. So uh, two-inch optics. These are, um, I think this is actually a uh, hmm, converging lens. Without touching it, it's a little hard to see. Oh, yeah, it's a converging lens. Without touching it, it's hard to see whether it is a bi-convex um, or... or um, Plano convex. The bi-convex means two surfaces are both convex. They're, they're kind of uh, just like that. And the uh, plano convex will be one plane and the other is convex. So without further measurement, just from this, this distance, I can't really see whether, which, one is, uh, which one is which one. I think it's probably bi-convex. And it's already mounted. You don't have to take it out. Uh, so set screw right here. It's already stuck. And you got a few more of these. And this one is a concave lens, and is is a part of your uh, your lab exercise to find out the uh, the focal point. This is a pretty dirty mirror. Um, I guess we'll have to uh, try to clean this. This is another front side mirror, but it's two inch. It's also pretty thick. Um, so at times you'll use this mainly because you want to reflect an image. An image has a certain size. With a one inch mirror, you can only reflect that much. But you, know, you can see the, the image, but not as well. Uh, the two inch mirror does a much better job in uh, getting you a larger image. Um, I'm not sure where the uh, other pieces are. There's supposed to be a, um, beam, uh, a, a beam splitter, but um, we'll have to find it later. This little thing here is a, is a card holder or the dual filter holder. You can put a little card here and see where the laser beam is hitting and do your adjustment with it. Or you can put the uh, diffuser on so that you don't have to hold it your, in your hand. So it's just a little uh, convenience device to hold a filter or, or, or something else in position. 
Yeah, and it also has a little uh, screw hole. You can you can mount it on the on the on the post and put it in a post holder. Um, yeah, we don't really use them. The ruler here. Guess that's it for this drawer. Um, oh, put this back. So in this drawer, you have something a little more. Oh, that's why the uh, the beam splitter is right here. It's a little dirty. So in this drawer, you have a rotational stage. Uh, what it what it does is it's pretty heavy. What's mounted, uh, and you turn this, it's able to turn the uh, the center, rotate the center with a very high accuracy. Uh, to what uh, what kind of accuracy? Well, you can look at it between. Uh, 350 and 360, there are 10 divisions. So on this, on the rotation stage, you can simply read how much, just one degree. And, and then what else you can do is, there's actually something like a caliper right here, it's a, it's a rotational version of it. And uh, you can read more accuracy from this, although we don't really require that accuracy. If I, if I read it, uh, there's actually a, a fixed scale, there's also a scale that rotates with it. And uh, hmm, 0.02 is the maximum. 0.01 has five divisions. So 0.005, uh, 0.002 would be the division on this. And then 0.002 is also cut into 100 divisions. So 0.02 degree time, uh, divided by 100. So let's see. That's, uh, that's a pretty accurate rotation. So you don't really need that kind of accuracy. Uh, but uh, at least for, for degree, half a degree, you, you need to get uh, that kind of accuracy. This is much better than that. And it's also expensive to uh, replace. So don't drop this. And this one is the translation stage. This is a much more uh, conventional uh, way to read it. It's a micrometer. Oh, it's, uh, it's a little stuck. Uh, but that's okay. We're replacing this with some higher quality ones. This one, this, this actually is not very stable. With only one screw secure in this thing, it's very unstable. Um, it has, well, it's already stuck. So five millimeters, there's actually half millimeter scale. So with a half a millimeter, you are able to cut it in 50 times. So it's a one hundredth of a millimeter. So that's the, uh, that's the accuracy. So, um, oh, there's also this, uh, this, uh, this is hard to see. It's, it's actually secured in the wrong direction. So that actually cuts things in 10 different scales. So you have one thousandth of a millimeter. So that's why it's called a micrometer. The, uh, the accuracy is one micron, one thousandth of a millimeter. But uh, it's, it's actually stuck. So we'll replace it. Um, inside the caliper, if you want to know the inside diameter of this little thing, you're just uh, going to squeeze on this. Right here, and uh, and secure it. Take it out and uh, use whatever measurement uh, it takes to to get the diameter out. We're not that uh, that picky on the uh, exact uh, diameter down to maybe just half a millimeter is fine enough. So just loosen this a little bit, and we have a really cheap caliper. But uh, it's, it's surprising to find out that some mechanical engineering students can read this. Uh, they'll have the digital version, which has numbers on it. Uh, I'm, I'm totally not against bringing one of your own over. But uh, before you graduate, maybe, uh, maybe everyone should uh, recheck their way of uh, reading all these mechanical devices, just in case. Right? I've, I've seen students with, uh, with digital calipers. They're really nice and, and easy to read. But uh, um, it's also worth the, uh, the time just getting getting well polished up on the uh, not so digital ones. So okay, this one last piece here. This is another uh, mirror slash lens holder, and it's also on the tilt stage. There are two screws, very fine threads, and you can tilt uh, forward, backward, sideways. And uh, this one uh, mounted inside is a um, is is a beam splitter. What it does is it splits about fifty percent of the intensity. Uh, through reflection, the other 50% through transmission, when you have 45 degree angle of incidence. Um, I suspect this is actually just uh, aluminum coating. You just don't coat it so much with aluminum. You just coat it with a little bit of aluminum. If you coat so much, it becomes a, a, a mirror that's, uh, that's almost 100% reflecting. 
but if you only coat so little and only a small portion gets reflected. So it's, uh, it is acting as a way to split the beam and later we probably want to recombine them to see how each beam has been doing, right? Uh, using uh, using uh, the uh, interference, and uh, we can actually find out how each beam is doing. Say, for example, one beam is not doing anything except for getting reflection and going back to the, to be combined. Maybe the other beam is going through something that we're mirroring. Um, maybe a, a movable arm. So when you move that arm, the beam is going through different distances. And when you combine that with the, the reference beam, that's not doing anything. And you can see how the uh, the changing of the distance. Uh, makes a combination change in the uh, in the interference. So it's it's a, it's a very neat thing to uh, to split the uh, the beam uh, with the uh, the beam splitter. Okay, so uh, maybe one last story right there. Okay, so what else we have here? We have a laser. We have laser power supply. And let's just not let's not drop the laser. But if you did, uh, let me know you dropped the laser and. Uh, uh, we'll have to replace it. And uh, the laser can be secured with the, uh, the gelatin or the V-mounts. Uh, Just use two of them, uh, secure them, and make sure you, you treat them nicely. If you're not going to use it uh, for, say, 10, 15 minutes, uh, turn it off and uh, just wait until you come back and turn it back on. You don't want to just keep it on for the night. Uh, either, each laser tube has a, has a lifetime. Um, and once that is gone, it's, uh, it's no longer operable. So uh, try, to, uh, try to save the, uh, the, uh, the leader for that. And uh, this is a, uh, arrow, an arrow and a lollipop light source. It's essentially just a, just a light bulb in behind. Uh, this is like a lollipop shape and there's an arrow shape. It helps you form a, an image. This is, a, this is acting as the object. So if you have a handedness, like the lollipop is pointing to the right and the arrow is pointing up, then you can, you can actually determine whether the image has been inverted and, and whether it has been inverted uh, left and right or up and down. So it, it helps you identify that. If all you do is draw a circle, you never know if it's inverted or not, right? So that's what it does. Gives you a little handedness. So this might be the right-handed uh, lollipop arrow uh, and there could be a left-handed one. So you can mix them together if you want. <laughs> and we don't really use this light source. Um, this light source needs a little bit of power supply from the, uh, the power supply that Woodwell is actually leaning against. So that, um, we don't really use this. Um, so just keep them here. It's, they're not pipes. They're, they're actually, there's a light inside. Uh, this is pretty much it. We're missing a few components, but uh, it's pretty much it, I think. Any questions?